The next question that uh, somebody sent us was, how do you determine what's a short-term investment and a long-term investment? Which, again, is a great question because many times you'll hear people talk about short-term investments and long-term investments. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I will say with this is, is very, very generically, when you're talking about a short-term investment, you're usually talking about less than a year. Um, short-term investments, and they're taxed differently. We have what's called a short-term capital gain, and a short-term capital gain is taxed differently, and that's an investment that you buy, you make money on, and you sell before a year. It's then referred to as a short-term cap capital gain tax that you have on that. A long-term then uh, um, long-term investment would be considered anything a year or longer. So a long-term capital uh, tax rate is more favorable than a short term. So people say, well, I just want to get in and make some money. Uh, they, they, look at, they may look at an investment and say, well, I'm just going to put in some money on that and I'll make this amount. Well, you have to account for the fact that, that there's going to be taxable consequences that come with the short term. And they've changed those more recently. Um, they've, they've gotten, you know, the short term gains are generally um, on the same level as your marginal income tax. So if you're at somewhere between 10, we have seven different levels or tax brackets, if you will, of, of income from 10% to 37%. And so if you are in a, uh, a certain tax bracket and have a short term gain and it bumps up your income, you'll be in a higher tax bracket, you'll have to pay on that for that. So they're generally not considered, um, unless you're in that game and you're really doing it, a good way to invest for most people. The best way is long term. And again, as we've talked about, when you start investing, a long term perspective is what you want to be able to have. So um, long, long term rates have changed. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that they just instituted uh, treats long term capital gains in a different capacity, but they're more favorable than short term. So you get a, you get a, bit, a, a little bit better break on a long term than you do a short term gain. Well, the, the, uh, you know, it's basically man at work to put money to work so that the money can put the man out of work that's and it. so he can retire. And that, that's the idea. But the consistency as you speak about it is so important that we do that. We see so many people get a, an investment it begins to get into that compounding phase, and then they will go spend it on something that depreciates, yeah. that doesn't appreciate because it's convenient, and then they will not have the discipline and go buy something that they could put off yeah. a little longer. I, I know the temptation is always there, but again, just to underline that compounding effect yeah. of continuous so, investing, $100 a month, you know, and then all of a sudden, what was it, 83000 Yeah, almost $83,000. Yeah. That's, yeah. Wow. Just a little bit shy. And, you know, it, it's, it, you can't overstate the importance and the power of that. Um, and, and once an individual gets that and sees that, that's where they usually really become a, <laughs> an excited investor, as we call them. They really get to see that, and wow, my money's growing, and, and all I'm doing is maybe putting in just a little bit, and it's increasing at a great rate. Um, one of the things I want to say um, in, in conjunction with that, we're talking about long-term and short-term. The reason that we normally, um, particularly when somebody's new at investing, but even as they're investing over the long haul, we put a long-term perspective, and we, we like the long-term long capital gains better than short-term. Um, I'll give you a great example. I had an individual once that came to me. I had a, a, a very affluent client that did very, very, very well. And they got into collectible arts and different things, uh, jewelry. They, they had uh, antiques. Um, and they did very well. And they were doing it on a more short, short term. Uh, well, this individual knew of it, came to me. Uh, they did not make, they were in, a, I think, a 12%, 15% tax bracket. So they weren't making a lot of money annually, and they wanted to get into this. And I said, well, understand that um, collectibles as a whole are taxed very easily at a 28% rate. So when you get into that, somebody who's in a 37% tax bracket and they're paying 28% and has the money to do that is in a different category than somebody who's in a 15% and they're going to pay a 28% tax on that uh, if you have a good gain. So they're usually not good ideas. It sounded good to them, and I can make money 
but they didn't think about that. So short and long term have to do inside of a year is a short term, outside of that, out over a year is a long term, and they are taxed differently, more favorable towards long term. So that's how we want to think when we're, we're going along the lines of really getting into um, investing. I hope that you will continue to send in your questions. Um, they, they mean a lot to us because uh, we can talk about a lot of things, but what we really want to do is find out what's important to you, uh, the level of understanding, the questions that you have, so hopefully that we can add value to your investment knowledge and that you can increase and grow in that and, uh, and stay curious and read as much as you can, get as much information, but when you have a question, please feel free to just uh, send that in to us. Send those questions in because we really do enjoy them and, and answering them helps us to make sure that we're being relevant and pertinent to you.